In the 50s, of course, the U.S. was a creditor nation. Now the U.S. is a debtor nation. Doesn't that change the equation a little bit in terms of being able to repeat what they did back then? Yeah, uh, given bit. the given the size of the debt load. Of course, a bit, uh, and you also have uh, not the kind of growth you had in in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Uh, but as long as a country is owner of its own central bank and is able to print money, it never ever will be defaulting. We are not worried about the U.S. being downgraded to triple B or triple C. The U.S. will always repay their debt. The big question is, and that's certainly what you are relating to, yeah. what is the buying power and what is the value of this repayment for foreign holders of their bonds? Yeah. And that's clearly uh, the issue we have to talk about. And foreign holders uh, are always an interesting group uh, to take grip upon because they are not voting. Uh, you have to reallocate uh, the burden from your waters to the owners of your debt being outside uh, of your uh, water um, clientele. Um, so you are absolutely right, uh, but finally they won't uh, have a default, uh, they just will default uh, on the value of the money. Well, is right now T-notes are yielding 2%, 30-year mm -hmm. uh, T-bond is something over 3%. Uh, are those interest rates high enough to offset this risk that you're just describing? Or are T-bonds and T-notes maybe in a bubble? Um, yeah, they are in a bubble if you just look on the economic fundamentals, uh, but we uh, are quite sure uh, that we won't see higher rates going forward. Uh, because uh, the Fed is buying them, uh, you will have enough uh, pressure on institutional investors uh, to invest in risk-free assets. Uh, and if you have capital market controls, uh, your American citizens are not able to flee and also have to uh, finally invest in, in T-bills and T-bonds. So we are not worried uh, that the interest rates will move up. Uh, we rather expect uh, that the interest rate will go even further, especially at the very long end of uh, the yield curve. And Operation Twist clearly is focused uh, on bringing the lower end of the yield curve even further down. Okay, so to paraphrase, correct me if I'm wrong, you see T-notes and T-bonds um, really more as a trade um, while interest rates are falling but not necessarily something that you would see as a long-term uh, investment because nominal dollars in the future will have less purchasing power than the dollars you're giving to the U.S. government today. That 2% yield is not enough to offset that risk. Am I stating that? Yeah, correctly? you're absolutely right. And we even don't take it as a trade. Uh, perhaps we are right in our assumption that the yields will uh, come down a bit further on, but the risk uh, of this trade in terms of buying power is uh, much too high. Now we try of course to find pockets of investments which have a much higher probability uh, to ensure buying power uh, than T-bills and T-bonds will. Mm -hmm. And finding that in the stock market? Uh, partially so. Yeah. Uh, there are very interesting quality stocks uh, which we think are absolutely fairly priced. Uh, we don't find them in the banking industry. Uh, we expect a uh, massive uh, forced capital increase, uh, which, will, um, which will generate a lot of um, um, negative impact to the existing uh, equity holders and partially perhaps even to some bond holders, depending on their uh, tier structure. Uh, we find that in um, equities with solid business models, which are ring-fenced against uh, emerging market competitions uh, with solid corporate governance structure, and the balance sheet situation, uh, which um, is well prepared for an inflationary scenario. Yeah, you know, the stock market, um, you know, as they say, it's not a stock market, but a market of stocks. Uh, one of the observations that I've been making since the 2008 low after the Lehman collapse was how poorly the financial stocks have been doing relative to the market as a whole. 
which to me was sort of a red flag indicating that you know, there's still problems in the banking system. I guess you would agree with that, that there's still problems that we have to face in the banking system. Yeah, no doubts about that. We have uh, gotten rid of all banking stocks in our portfolios in 2007. Mm -hmm. When we realized that the banking system is uh, full of this very low regulated special purpose vehicles and uh, hardly any of the CFOs of a bank were able to give us a proper description about the real value of their balance sheet. Uh, we argued we can't invest in such structures. Uh, we have a trustee responsibility for the money of our clients and the trustee responsibility is for us understanding the investment. Mm -hmm. And at that moment of time we are not able to understand uh, the business model uh, of, of a bank, uh, the quality of the balance sheet and we argue uh, that uh, they need massive capital increases um, to, ha to regain a working and, um, and um, sustainable business model. And of course if you need such a capital increase, uh, uh, the existing shareholders are the ones who have to take the blame. Mm 